I find it hard to imagine quite how my brain, the conscious, I mean, if, if I tried to instruct my immune system to, to do, supposing I had a problem and I, I knew I had the problem, I, I really, really want to will my immune system to do but something. But Richard, it's, it's, of course it's terribly important that you can't. It has to be ring-fenced or else we, as soon as we felt pain, for example, we'd simply say, oh, bother that and get rid of it. Now that would be a disaster. Yeah, that we would. need we need yeah. pain. We need fever. We need to be careful how we deploy yeah, our we immune resources. Yeah, we don't need cancerous so, tumours, and I mean, we well, we, we are, but we, we need not to be able to override our natural econo the natural economy. Natural of economy, our, because uh, it would yeah. be spend we'd spend too much of it. Yes, yes, yes. we would, because you know we. Uh, lots of symptoms of illness are very unpleasant. Uh, they're designed to be yeah, in order to stop to us getting into further trouble. So it has to be ring fenced. So we can't tell ourselves to get better, but we can sometimes believe the authority of an outsider whom uh, we believe has our interests in his hands or her hands. Um, if I were a skeptic, um, I think I would still worry about how the exact route by which being given permission by, by somebody else works, and also what the evolutionary origin of that might have been? Well, the evolutionary origin would have been, uh, you know, just, for example, tender loving care, pretty recognisable at any stage of evolution. Yeah. I mean, dogs, for example, respond to placebos, in, uh, placebo medicines when they're administered by their owner. Um, dogs can respond to the owner's sense that the dog is in good hands. Um, and, uh, and, 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 the, uh, and no doubt, non-verbal cues of that kind have been working for us for a very long time. But humans, I'm sure, have taken this, this to a much more sophisticated level because uh, the, you know, now we have all sorts of ways of predicting the future, seeing what our prospects are, judging the social situation, judging, reading the signs and so on, which were not available to animals, but which nonetheless are highly relevant to managing our own health, health systems. Yeah. So let me see if I got this right. You, what you're saying is that we have within us more than enough resources to combat pain and certain kinds of, Ill of illness, yes. but we mustn't use them all in an in well, we an extravagant way. I mean, pain is not an illness. It's certainly important, usually yes. not an yes. illness. Pain is a defense, like nausea is a defense, like fever is a defense. It would be very dangerous to override them immediately and to let our guard down. We'll only do that, and we'll have been programmed quite strongly by natural selection, not to do it until we have pretty good evidence that it's safe to do so. Now. Uh, what some of these powerful figures, I mean, uh, in the, which whom the alternative healers are doing, is providing us with what we take to be pretty good evidence that we're in safe hands. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, maybe we're not. It's, and of course, quack doctors could actually be getting us into trouble by allowing us to cure ourselves before it's right to do so, before mm -hmm. it's safe to do so. But that's a problem even with, 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 with a lot of ordinary medicines, for example. To the we, extent that they all, they all work using the same kind yeah. of... Well, yes. I mean, aspirin gets rid of the pain yeah. when our body has said, no, I need this pain. Um, yes. So, as, actually, as we know, it's sometimes not safe to take painkillers and all things which suppress fever. Mm. I mean, influenza can last a good deal longer if you take something to suppress the fever. But all these things have evolved in the situation 100, 200,000 years ago, where the world was generally a much more a dangerous place, where we really were likely to be in, in trouble if we didn't husband our resources. The world's changed, and therefore we can afford to take risks these days, which we couldn't do before. And I think that's why uh, so much of this alternative medicine is proving yeah. to be so effective. Yes, yes. I mean, the sort of theoretical underpinning of everything you're saying is Darwinian medicine, yes. which um, I have a lot of time for, uh, but not all um, the medical profession do, do they? It's a new way of thinking for them. I mean, yeah. uh, so, uh, but yes, I mean, I think there's a lot of education we still have to, to, to do in terms of getting this message across to medical schools. But um, it's things that things are changing. I mean, I think it's particularly in the area of psychiatry where people are beginning to realize increasingly. I mean, that psychological illness, sure. and therefore it's easier to see how uh, yeah. mental factors could be relevant to, to cure. But mm -hmm. uh, in the treatment of depression, for example, trying to understand the reasons why, adaptive reasons why people might be depressed and therefore the circumstances under which certain kinds of information or even, you know, even pills with, with, with the right kind of label on them are likely to help people to get out of it. Let's take the case of Prozac. It's been now absolutely established. Prozac's a, a very successful antidepressant drug, but 80% of the power of Prozac has now been shown to be placebo. Um, and since 
Prozac is also potentially a risky uh, drug to take for youngsters. It's been shown to, to be associated with increased risk of suicide, significant risk of suicide. There is some reason to, to say that actually we should just be using the placebo and not a drug like Prozac, which actually does have some ph pharmacological effects which are relevant to treating depression, but they're not, you know, they're not the most important part of it's why It's known that the, that the suicide effect is not also placebo, is it? I mean, yes. potentially it could yes, be. Yes. Yeah. Perhaps we ought to plug the leading book on Darwinian medicine. Uh, Nessie and Williams, never remember the title. It should be called Darwinian medicine, but it isn't. Um, well, it was called Darwinian medicine in Britain, and I think it was called... Uh, no, 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 no. It was no. called Why, why We... No, it, what I'll tell you, I've got, I've, got, I've got the story tape. Yes. Um, Do you want to... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It changed yeah. names across okay. the Atlantic, didn't No, no, it? OK. Yeah. Um, it was called Why We Get Sick. And if ever there was a silly title for a book, it's that, because, and it was thoroughly against the author's, the author's intentions. Why we get sick tell, says to a doctor, I don't need to read this book because I already know. Um, whereas it, if it had been called Darwinian medicine, as it should have been, then doctors might have, been, might have thought, this is interesting, this is something new, this is something I hadn't thought of. So it was called Why We Get Sick. And then it couldn't be called that in Britain, because why we get sick in Britain means why we throw up. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so it became... That's what I can't remember. I think it was something like Evolution and Healing. That's right, I think it but was. But what you do is you go into a bookshop and you say, I want the book by Nessie and Williams, which ought to be called <laughs> Darwinian Medicine, and I think is called Darwinian Medicine in the, in the subtitle. And it's under spirituality or something. It's, is probably, it? <laughs> under, it's probably under. Um, but, yes. but all doctors who might be watching should, should go and buy this book. Um, um, my own recommendation of it was buy two copies mm. and give one to your doctor. Mm. Anyway, sorry, that was an interpolation. But, um, no, and, I mean, what it's, it's about, it's about sickness behaviour interpreted as an evolutionary adaptation. I mean, yeah. when people are ill, what can be looked at as they're behaving like sick people. They're showing pain, they're, they're taking the, their bodies rather more seriously and attending to their symptoms. They're being very cautious. Um, they're not using their body in the way they would. They're being careful about what they eat and so on. All of that and so it's only part of the story, is in fact an evolutionary adaptation because our ancestors who did these things took better care of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but we can go beyond that to look at you know, exactly how we use our immune systems, how we use our tissue uh, uh, recovery programs and so on, and the ways in which we've been uh, adapted, set up by evolutionary history, to be quite careful about exactly when and where we use our healing resources. We don't want to squander them all at once. We don't want to get better before time, if in fact it's not safe to do so. Um, and these sort of the, the ground rules were set, set up a long time ago. So the interesting thing is that nowadays we can probably afford to do without some of these sickness behaviours and in fact to cure ourselves when in the past, long past, we wouldn't yeah. have been able to. Mm. And I think some of the success mm. of alter, 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 alternative healing, people, why people find it so attractive, is that it's, it's actually tapping into the, the, the situation where nowadays we can overrule um, the, our traditional uh, uh, sort of inhibitions of curing yeah. ourselves. And that gives me the idea that um, pharmacological approaches to overruling the innate mechanisms. Right. Um, what this suggests to me is that it, it might be possible to invent a drug which works by persuading the body to spend a bit more of its natural uh, defensive resources as effectively, or perhaps more effectively, than a, than a faith healer. Well, maybe. I mean, I, but I think words are a pretty effective drug and much cheaper as well. Um, I mean, you know, <laughs> Not necessarily much well, not cheaper. Not necessarily, that's true, <laughs> of course. Um, but anyway, I mean, I think we can, we can provide, let's say, reassurance through the medium of language and tender loving care, which would be very difficult to mimic with a drug. And um, uh, I'm not saying we, we couldn't, but it's, uh, I, I, I think I'm, I'm very happy to stay with the traditional uh, I mean, long, long traditional way in which we regulate our, our, our healing systems, which has been through social contact and respect and, and, and belief in but others. But now that you feel, now that you know all this, it doesn't work anymore, does it? 